So when you want to write an equation from standard form to slope intercept form, basically all we're looking at doing is solving for y. All right, so just a quick review. Um, standard form here is going to be ax plus by equals c. And basically what we're trying to do now is to rewrite it into slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. There's many reasons to do that. Um, a lot of them is just to understand what the slope is or the y-intercept or also to graph. But in this video, what I want to do is just kind of focus on how do we write it from standard form to slope intercept form. So in this first example, you can see we have a 2x plus y is equal to a negative 7. All right, now basically if I want to write this in slope intercept form, I just want to isolate the y. So we got to look at here and say, all right, what is this 2x doing to the y? Now this is form, now this is written in ax plus by form. And sometimes to like better understand this, sometimes you can rewrite this, right? That's a positive 2x, right? So if I were to swap the 2x and the y, this would be a y plus a 2x equals negative 7, right? I didn't change anything. I just, you know, flipped them around. And hopefully then you can see that, oh, I'm actually adding a 2x to the y. Right? It's not always apparent sometimes when you just have a positive 2x, but that's exactly what's happening. You're adding the 2x to the y. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 2x on both sides. And then again, we want to write it into that slope intercept form. So I'm going to put the mx in front of the b. So therefore, that's going to be a negative 2x, um, not plus a negative 7. Let's just rewrite that as a negative 7. And therefore, then if we wanted to, we could identify the slope here to be a negative 2 and the y-intercept to be a negative 7. Um, now let's go and take a look at the next example, which now is going to add in a couple more things that are being multiplied by the y. So in that case, I'm going to have a 3x plus 6y is equal to a 12. Okay, so now again, we got to look at this y and we say, all right, we want to take this in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So I got to isolate the y. So when I look at this, I say, all right, what is happening to my y? It's being multiplied by 6. And again, remember, it's being added by a 3x. So the first thing we always want to do is undo addition and subtraction. So I'm going to subtract a 3x on both sides. Now in this case, I'll have a 6y is equal to a negative 3x plus a 12, all right? And now we need to undo multiplication by 6, right? Because we have the 6 times the y. So just like we undid addition with subtraction, to undo multiplication, I'm going to divide by a 6 on both sides. Now here's where a lot of students will make their mistakes because they'll only divide the 6 into the 12 because 6 evenly divides into 12. But we gotta remember the distributive property, right? The six actually needs to distribute into this negative three x as well as to the 12. And you might say, but Mr. McLogan, six doesn't divide into negative three x, and you are correct. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna write it there and then we'll try to see if we can reduce it at all. So negative three x over six, and then six does divide into 12, right? We could say that's gonna be a positive two times. Now in this case, you can see that, oh, well, yeah, it doesn't evenly divide into it, but I can divide a three in the top and the bottom to reduce my fraction. Um, and if I divide a three in the top, that's gonna be a negative x and divide a three in the denominator, that's gonna be a two. So that actually this can be reduced to a negative one half x. So y equals a negative one half x plus two. Now that's gonna be my final form in slope intercept form um, where my slope is gonna be negative one half and my y intercept is gonna be two. Just to, it's also important to, to recognize this negative could be up the top, it can be in the denominator, it can be in front. Just don't put it in the top as well as in the bottom. Don't want to be doing that. All right, let's go and take a look at um, a third example here. And this one is going to be a little bit more tricky sometimes for students. So if we have x minus a 3y is equal to a 1. And, and the reason why sometimes, again, it gets tricky is with that, like, division. Students sometimes have, like, a hard understanding of what to do here when we are either when we have a negative or we don't have coefficients in front. So again, the first thing like I want you to recognize is what is happening to the three. Now, I kind of made this Freudian slip the first time I was recording the video. And so it's just very important to kind of like recognize a lot of times students will look at this and say, oh, you're subtracting a three. Well, no, no, no. Be very careful what's happening here, right? This is the positive X, right? So you could put like a plus symbol in front of there, but or you could rearrange it if you wanted to, but you are adding the X. Now, in this case, like over here, remember we are multiplying. Let's see, where was that? you're multiplying by six, right? So we divided by six. Well, in this case, you're not multiplying by negative three. You're actually, I'm sorry, you're not multiplying by a three. You're multiplying by a negative three, all right? So again, another way that we could rewrite this problem if we really wanted to, um, we could also rewrite this as a negative three times a y plus x, right? And again, sometimes I think just rearranging things, just make sure you keep the signs the same helps us to understand exactly what's happening, but it is not subtracting a three. That is a big mistake that students will make, so don't do that. All right, so now let's just use our inverse operations. We are first are gonna undo addition and subtraction first, right? So then I have a negative three y is equal to, again, we're gonna write this x in front, so it's a negative x plus one, and then we're going to divide by negative three. 
Now in this example, fortunately we already did some examples where our denominator does, our divisor does not evenly divide into our term. So that's fine. We're just gonna have a fraction. We're just gonna have an answer with fractions. That is okay. So therefore that's gonna divide out. We're gonna meet with a y equals. Now in this case, remember there is a one that's being multiplied by the x, right? So I didn't write it over here. Um, I didn't write the you know one times x, but you can kind of think about this as a one times x, x over here. So in reality, what we really have is a negative one divided by negative three. Well, any negative divided by negative is going to be a positive, right? So that's gonna be a one third x. And then in this case, we have a one divided by negative three, which is just gonna be a negative one third. So you could write that as a positive or a plus a negative one third. But in reality, just like in the last example, you can rewrite this as a one third, I'm sorry, one third x minus a one third. Now, hopefully this is helpful, but if you want a bonus, let's go and do one more example that I think most students are gonna get tripped up on. And the reason why this bonus problem is, actually, it's not right for, let's write bonus. The reason why this problem is gonna get tricked up for a lot of students because it's not technically in standard form, all right? But it's not in slope intercept form. So we'll technically, when we're talking about um, standard form, that's gonna be in this ax plus by is equal to c, and technically a and b are going to be integers, and a is always gonna be positive, right? Now that happens a lot, and all these examples, I was true to like the definition of standard form, but what about if I just had an equation like this? Negative one half x plus a four thirds y is equal to five. And let's say I wanted to write this equation in slope intercept form. It's not, it's not, again, it's not technically in standard form, but again, how would you do this in slope intercept form? Like we just did a problem with fractions, but this one's kind of different because this one starts, has fractions at the beginning. Well, what I would recommend doing in this case is actually just getting rid of the fractions. So I would multiply everything by my LCD. So again, the LCD is going to be the least common denominator or the least common multiple of my denominators. So what you can do is make sure you take a look at all your denominators, right? I could rewrite five as five over one and say, all right, what is the smallest number that my two, three, and one evenly divide into? And sometimes that's hard. So sometimes you might want to list out the multiples of your denominator, right? And you could just do like three, six, nine, 12 and say, hey, the smallest number that two and three and obviously one divide into is six. So my LCD, right? In this case, my LCD, is equal to six. So again, I'm gonna multiply everything times a six. Everything, you gotta make sure you're produ multiplying everything times six to produce what we call equivalent equations. So I'm gonna multiply everything times six, this is what I'm gonna get. All right, so I'm gonna have a um, six times a negative one half x plus a six times a four thirds y plus a six, oops, not plus, that's gonna be an equals, right? So that's equals to a six times a five. Okay, so now what we need to do is actually go ahead and multiply these out. So now we need to multiply six times as fractions. Now the cool thing is the two divides into six three times, right? Three times negative one is going to be a negative three x. Three evenly divides into six two times. Two times four is going to be a positive eight. So that's an eight uh, y. And then six times uh, five is going to be a 30. So now in this case, you can see we basically kind of have the exact same type of problem going on. Like now we're just going to isolate the y. We just needed to kind of get rid of the fractions first. So to isolate my y or to solve for my y, I'm going to add a three x to the other side. Therefore I'll have a eight y is equal to a negative three x plus 30. And now I will divide by an eight on both sides. And now I have a y is equal to, now again, a negative three x over eight, that does not, eight does not evenly divide into that. So that's okay, just rewrite it as a fraction, right? A negative three eighths x. And then eight does not divide into 30. However, you can divide a two on the top and the bottom, right? So I can rewrite this as a 30 over eight, but then recognize that I can divide a two in the top, right? Two divides into 30, 15 times, and two divides into eight, a four times. So therefore I get a final, uh, final answer of a negative three eighths x plus a 15 over four. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. And if so, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers.